Once the purpose is clear, we need to develop a strategy to achieve that purpose. How am I going to do that? Once the purpose is clear, we need to develop a strategy to achieve that purpose. Have you all, all heard this word strategy? What does it mean? Action plan to achieve the purpose. Very good. Method. Can you explain the word strategy in, in another three letter word? A very simple three letter word tells you what strategy is. How? Strategy means how. If I am to convince my fellow participants or my friends to start playing an unusual musical instrument like a harp, or to start playing the guitar, or to start playing cricket, or to start collecting stamps. How am I going to do that? That is the strategy. Strategy is how. So, when we talk of strategy, we have this thing called a nice strategy wheel. So, when we discuss about each point, I want you to make notes about that point. Because otherwise, by the time I get to the end of all the points, you would have forgotten the first point. So, let's go point by point and write the notes for each point. Who is your audience? Whom are you speaking to? Who is your audience? Now, my audience today is you. Who are you? So, y'all are people probably in the 25, 27 to 35 type of age group from the corporate sector, all doing very responsible jobs uh, in and around Colombo. That's the audience. So, you are what? White collar workers. Y'all know what this blue collar and white collar is. So, white collar is generally people in an executive and above grade. That's the normal terminology. White collar workers are executive management. Blue collar ke anis in factory workers, blue collar. Laborers, maintenance guys, we call blue collar. Not that they have a blue collar. So blue collar and white collar. So we are all generally white collar. What is the difference? Say white collar is you are doing a desk job. Uh, blue collar, you are doing a technical hands-on job. Even a driver is blue collar. And so all of y'all are not doing like that. You are doing thinking job. Y'all are knowledge workers. So blue collar, white collar. From my knowledge, there is nothing in between as far as I know. So who is your audience? Now, if I was talking to a group of teenagers, I would have to give different examples. I would have to speak in a different type of language. I would have to use more of the language that they are used. When I'm talking to you all, it has to be more the language that you understand. So who is my audience? It's very important to know who is the audience. What do you want them to do? Now in your case, Upeksha wants them to start collecting stamps. Tarinda wants them to start playing an unusual musical instrument. Chintaka wants them to start playing cricket. What do you want them to do? You want them to watch documentaries. And it's Vichitra. Chintaka wants them to watch documents. So that is what do you want them to do? So what do you want them to do is your purpose, isn't it? That's link. What do you ultimately want them to do? You want them to go and do. Now you are making notes while I'm talking. In order for them to do what you want them to do, what key thought do you want them to remember? Now, for example, Upeksha is going to talk about this stamp collecting today, maybe at 3.30. Now, after this, 3.30, we'll finish at 5 o'clock. You will go home. It might take another one and a half, two hours. You go home by 7 o'clock. So, you probably might not start collecting stamps today. Tomorrow is Friday. Now, tomorrow when they wake up in the morning, they should think, ah, Upeksha told me collect stamps. But tomorrow also, they'll go to work. They come home. Now, after that weekend, Saturday, Sunday, they might remember Upeksha, stamps. So, when Saturday, Sunday comes, what is the key thought you want them to remember? So, in order to collect stamps, what's the key thought you want them to remember? Now, what is the importance of collecting stamps? Why should I collect stamps? stamps? So, one of the key thoughts you want them to remember is that stamps are going to give you knowledge. What else? Key thought. It's going, stamps is going to increase your patience. Collecting stamps with so two key thoughts now. It will increase your knowledge. It will increase your patience. One more. Very, very important one. You can make money because you find a rare stamp. You can sell that for a lot of money. So my father was collecting stamps and his dream was to find a stamp that's going to, you know, give him a lot of money. And he was telling me also, look at my stamps and you know, see what is the valuable one. I didn't actually still get around to doing that. But there are stamp associations as well. Now, there are a lot of points that you would like them to remember. But you tell them a lot of things they won't remember. So you have to think from all the things you said, what is the most important thing you want them to remember? So what is the most important reason that they would start collecting stamps? What's the most important reason that you started collecting stamps? Because of the knowledge. So then that's what you need to get into their head. So in your talk of two minutes, three minutes, whatever, you might want to say you have to get, you will increase your knowledge by doing this. Maybe twice, three times, four times, you have to keep reiterating that point, emphasizing that point. Then it will go into the head. Ayal, with me, what's the key point you want them to remember, Kalani? So what's the key point you want them? That is your purpose. That is what do you want them to do? You want them to listen to classical music. You have to give me a reason why. What's the key thought you want them to remember? Otherwise, why should I do it? It makes you feel calm. 
So the key thought you want them to remember is listening to classical music will make you feel calm. Even when you're stressed out, it will make you feel calm. Even when you're angry, it will make you feel calm. Even when you're sad, it will make you feel calm. Now did you see what I just did also? It will make you feel calm. So then it will make you feel calm is going to go into the head twice, three times, four times. Even when you're angry, make you feel calm. Even when you're happy, make you, and that's fine. Even when you're uh, frustrated, make you feel calm. Even when you're annoyed, make you feel calm. Even when you're stressed, make you feel calm. That's a trick that Martin Luther King also just doing. What's the key point we want them to remember? They are not going to remember two, three, four, five things. Get one thing into the head. Why should you do this? I remember that. Now I will do it. Now you have to also think. Now Kalani, if you take your hobby, listen into classical music, who's your favorite composer? Indian classical music. That's also very important. When Don't just say classical music, you have to then say Indian classical. Because otherwise we can get confused. Classical music, you have a, it's very wide. And when you just say classical music, the first thing that comes into people's minds will be Western classical music. So we have to be specific, clear. Purpose has to be clear. Imagine you're doing laser surgery and you widen the, <laughs> the ray, you're going to destroy some organ. So the laser has to be very focused. Sharp. So remember, purpose also has to be very focused, very clear, very sharp. So Indian classical. Now, in order to convince this group of people, you might need to know a little bit more about them. Do they listen to music at all? Do they even know what Indian classical music is? What instruments are played in Indian classical music? How long has it been there? So what key thought do you want them to remember? Indian classical music is going to make you calm. So then you need to think, do these guys get stressed out in their job? Because if they say, no, I have no stress at all, I am always calm, then they don't need to listen to Indian classical music to become calm. If I'm never stressed out, you don't need. If I'm never stressed out, I don't need to listen to music to make me calm. So now you need to think. So Gayan is at Litro, Amila is stock exchange. So you think stock exchange, I guess, is their stress. No stress. So then you can't convince them. No, but it's not that way. Because all their jobs will have stress. Or even if the job doesn't have stress, then you think, Gayan, how long do you travel each day? Three hours a day. So Gayan, that must be very stressful, right? I mean, on Colombo Road, while driving, listen to Indian classical music. All your stress will go away. So you have to think. Now you may not know each of them personally, right? What do they eat at home or something? You may not know. But now you know what job they are doing. You know which company they are working. You know that they are living in Colombo at least half an hour, but they have to travel each day. You know that driving on Colombo Road is very stressful. So you can now connect the dots and say, when you're driving home, you want to relax after the hard day's work. Listen to Indian classical music. How to connect it? Those who understood so far, how to connect? What key thought do you want them to remember? How will you communicate? That is, what's the medium? Are you going to communicate on email? Are you going to communicate using verbal communication. Is it on a Zoom call? Is it online? Is it in person? Is it a video conference? Is it a telephone call? So if it's a Zoom call, you might have to think, how will I communicate? Versus in person. Now this is in person. In person, I can walk up to you if I need to. Zoom call, I can't do that. So I need to think, what is the medium? How am I going to communicate? Is it only telephone? I can't see you also. Is it email? I can't hear you and see you. So based on how I will communicate, your strategy might change a little bit. Now, if for example, if I'm sending an email to Lahiru on stamp collecting, I might send some pictures of stamps also in the email. I might send him a picture of me sitting and doing stamp collecting with a big smile on my face. I go back to big smile. So think of how you are going to communicate. Then, how long do you have? Time. How long do you have to communicate? So today, Hasel, how long do you have to communicate? Your hobby? Two minutes. What's your hobby? Play the guitar. So how long do you have? Based on that, we need to plan. We need to plan based on how long that you have to speak. So if you have 30 minutes, how you can structure is different to if you have two minutes. But even sometimes you have two minutes. Now I'm sure when you all were doing your presentations yesterday, when you just did a round of speaking, I'm sure there would have been people who stopped speaking before two minutes. Now sometimes you have two minutes is not enough. Right? Can I say in two minutes? But there are people who are not taking that full two minutes. So you utilize your time to the maximum, whatever you can. How do you do that? Know exactly what you're going to say. What is the context or the background? So we'll take Kalani's hobby again. I want them to listen to Indian classical music because it's going to make them calm. If you know that everyone in this group, Buddhika, Chintaka, Gayan and Amilas, ah, blood pressure is very high. So in the tea break, you can see them taking a period. Tablet tag and ah, you ask Chintak, what is this tablet? My pressure is very high. Pressure is very high means stress is also high. Now you have the context of the background. You are all taking this high blood pressure tablets to bring your pressure down. Listen to Indian classical music. That's going to calm you. You can save money also. So that's the context of the background. There is a good hook you can take there. Now if I'm trying to convince my sales staff that they have to achieve the target and if I tell them, you know, if you achieve the target this month, you are going to go on a tour to Bangkok. Context or background is, you achieve the target, you go to Bangkok. Think of, you talk about Bangkok. What is in Bangkok? How hot it is. People love to go to Bangkok because it's hot. You talk about Bangkok. Thinking. So, context or background. What is the context or background? Talking to someone who has just got a chest pain that he should go and see the doctor, he's going to really get convinced and go and see the doctor. 
talking to someone who thinks he's 100% healthy on the importance of getting an annual checkup, it's going to be more difficult to convince because a background, I don't need it. I'm fine. <laughs> you understand the difference? So what is the context or the background for this conversation? Then what is your relationship to the audience? What does this mean? This means, do you have any family members in the audience? What is your relationship to the audience? What, is, what does relationship mean? What is my connection with the audience? We realize that some of you have already met Nayan, Gayan, Lali, because you all had come for some earlier sessions, which means there is already a connection between you and me. So then we went back and checked what programs you all had come for. So there is Turbulence the Times and there was Smart Professional, I think, Gayan earlier. So that's a connection. That means we already have a relationship. Now imagine Nayana and uh, Lalin came for Turbulence to Triumph, which was last November, our leadership program. And let's say I look at the feedback you gave after the program. And let's say feedback KK, you all have said this was an awful program. Now, is there a relationship between me and them? Yes. Is it a good relationship? No. Now I have to think, my gosh, they were not happy with the earlier program. Now they are coming again because they have been sent by the uh, company. How do I somehow give them more value and make them happy? Is it good that I know that? Yes, it is. So that's also me knowing what is the relationship. Now, I have to, I can see the rest of the people. Who are you? What your names are? From the name I know, I don't know you. From the company, I, I know the company. So when these ladies came from CBL, I came and spoke about Gehan Mendes because I know Gehan Mendes. So through that, we can actually build a relationship because you all also know him, I also know him. So we can start to build a relationship there. Then Trelleborg, I have done some work there. We know each other. Well, at least we know the companies. Litro, we know. CSC, we know. So then when you uh, Coca-Cola are getting to know, but I know the brand very well. So then now I can think, okay, who is my audience? What is the relationship I have with them? Now, if I have a bad relationship with Gayan, I have to think, how do I correct this? Now, imagine you are talking to uh, a sales force, for example, where the sales force is very upset with you as the manager because you have promised them an increment you didn't give. Now, what's the relationship? They don't trust you. Credibility issue. Now, you are coming to talk to them and saying, trying to convince them to somehow achieve the target. Now, you have to think, as soon as I come and tell them you have to achieve the target, they are going to say, boss, they might not say it with their words, but they are thinking, boss, we don't trust you. Boss, you told us you give an increment you didn't give. Why should we listen to you now? So, that is your relationship with the audience. Based on that relationship, you might have to change how you're going to communicate. You might have to change what you're going to say. You might have to change how you're going to say. Yes or no? Can I have a show of hands? Yes. You might have to think and change that. That's the relationship. Now, if I know, Gayan, I have a fantastic relationship. Uh, Nayana, I have a great relationship. Lalin, I have a great relationship. Now, I can build on that. <laughs> so, it's knowing your relationship with your audience. Do they know you at all? Have they worked with you before? What has the previous work experience been like? Has it been positive or negative? Have they benefited by having a relationship with you? All that is important. What is the relation? And based on that, you can now be. So you have to think, right? What is the relationship? Even if there's no relationship, then what do they know about you? We know nothing. If the audience knows nothing about you, what can you do? Introduce yourself. An even better thing you can do. Someone audience, someone else. You bring someone else and get them to introduce you. And that increases your authority. Remember, that is one thing in our model. Authority. Let's say Amila is here. Nayana is here. Let's say Amila comes and introduces Nayana. So Amila comes and says, Ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce you to Nayana. He is an expert in trading operations. He has been working at the stock exchange for so many years. This is his background. This is his qualifications. These are all the good things he has done. Somebody else is saying. Then everybody in the, in, in the audience says, wow, Nayana is fantastic. Now when Nayana comes and talks, what happens? Hey, everybody will go to sleep. What happens when Nayana comes and talks? They will be interested. Why is that? Because Amila has given a good introduction, which is a good recommendation. Now you do this all the time. Vasanta, have you gone to see a doctor recently? Recently not. Let's say you go to see Dr. Anuruddhika. Okay, so now Vasanta goes to see Dr. Anuruddhika. Dr. Anuruddhika is doctor, but not a specialist. She is his general practitioner, family doctor. Now, if you are going to see Dr. Anuruddhika for 10 years, what's the relationship like between Vasanta and Dr. Anuruddhika? He is going to see her for 10 years. No history? She knows his history very well. Why does he continue to go to see her? Good relationship. He's in love with her. Why does he continue to go to see her? She's giving good medicine. Therefore, he's going to see her. She's giving the wrong medicine. She was not going to go again. Why is he continuing to see her? He trusts her. That's the word. Why is he going to see her continuing? Because she is giving good medicine. Why? Because he trusts her. Now, do you have a GP like that that you trust? Reasonable. What? Price. But sometimes, even if the uh, price is a little high, even if price is a little high, Tushita, if the trust is there, you will still go. So now he's going to see Dr. Anuruddhika because he has a relationship. He has seen her for 10 years. She has been given good medicine and he trusts her. Now he goes and sees Dr. Anuruddhika and now she says, Vasanta, you know, I think you better see a specialist in this area because the report, according to the report, I think 
it's not so good. Uh, more than me, I think you should go and see a specialist cardiologist. Now, if she is telling you to go and see a cardiologist, will you go? Yes, because you trust her. Yeah, Vishwasa can nahi da. Doctor Anurudh ka kyu hoat? Dil specialist karek balan ne kela maya na. He will go. So you ask doctor, please. Yes, of course I will go. Who is a good specialist you can recommend? Then she says, Vasanta, the best cardiologist I know is a consultant Dr. Varuna. Go and see Dr. Varuna. You know, he is a fantastic guy. He is he's like really good in this field. So many patients he has cured. You go and see him. Will you go? You go. Do you know Dr. Varuna? No. Because he recommended. That's the power of authority. Now, you don't know him at all. Why are you going to see him? Because the person you trust is saying, go and see him. So that is how we use authority. When you're talking to an audience, try to get someone else to introduce you. Now we have Naveen and we have uh, Hasela from Kamash. You both ended up in the same group. Kamash. Let's imagine that both of you are experts on fixed deposits. I call the bank and I say, I need to get some information on fixed deposits. Who picks up the phone? Naveen. Are you an expert on fixed deposits? Yes. Should you tell me about fixed deposits? No. So Naveen picks up the phone. What would be even better? He has the knowledge, yes. But what would be even better is if he says, Sanjeev, let me try transfer this call to Hasela, who's an expert on fixed deposits and you give some background about Hasela and you transfer the call. Now when Hasela advises me, Sanjeev never did like this, this is a good interest rate, whatever, am I more likely to believe him? Yes. Why? Because Naveen gave the recommendation. And same way, if Hasela picks up the phone, you transfer to Naveen. Give him a small introduction. You know, ah, Sanjeev, you're so happy, so lucky that you called today because our expert Naveen is here today. He knows all about it. Give me two minutes, I'll transfer the call. Then Naveen Kiyot, no. Ah, oh, Sanjeev, these are today you should put a fixed deposit because the rate is very good today. I'll come. Why? Recommendation. That's how we can use authority. Okay, so what's your relationship? Who is your audience? What do you want them to do? What key thought do you want them to remember? How will you communicate with your audience? How long do you have? What is the context or background? And what is your relation? So when you answer all these questions, you now have a strategy. What are the words you're going to use? How are you going to communicate? How long should you plan to do this? Do you need someone to give you an introduction? Everything. And then we can make that communication better.